Our next talk is Haiku. Uh, our speaker has been working on Haiku since 2001, so that's the last 10 years. He currently works for the University of Queensland. So can we welcome Phil Greenway? Well, good morning and welcome. Um, my name is Phil Greenway. I'm here to talk about the Haiku operating system. Um, if you're here to learn about uh, Japanese poetry, you're in the wrong place and you'll be sadly disappointed. Um, I got started on the project back in uh, 2001 um, when it was first, first announced. Um, I uh, began as a programmer, then uh, first uh, stepped into a more of a mentor role, uh, being a team leader. Uh, looking after, uh, you know, submitting patches and those sorts of things from people who didn't have commit access uh, and helping people along with their coding. Um, so if, what is Haiku, you're probably all wondering, because this is a Linux conference and, and Haiku certainly isn't Linux, but it is a, uh, it's a free open source operating system that was based on the B operating system. Um, it's uh, BOS and it's also compatible with... Um, it's based on BOS and it's also compatible with BS. It was, as I said, it was first started in 2001. Uh, at that time, it was uh, originally called OpenBOS um, because there was no other name that anyone could sort of come up with. This was uh, later changed um, due to a, um, a trademark infringement with Palm because Palm actually bought uh, BOS when it went under. Um, and then um, there was a community vote to change it to Haiku. Um, the reason why uh, the, the name Haiku was uh, actually chosen was because the original browser that came with BOS was called Net Positive, and when you would have uh, error messages, uh, rather than just saying something like, you know, 404 error, uh, it would actually give you a Haiku as the, as the error message. Uh, so why, why is Haiku based on BOS? Well, because um, it's an awesome operating system. Um, it was created about, as I said, about 20 years ago, 1991, when a bunch of former Apple employees uh, left uh, to start their own piece of hardware, which they called the, the B-Box. Um, at the time, they also needed um, something to, uh, to run on this, so they created their own operating system, which the, the BOS was, was then born. Um, in many respects, both the, uh, the B-Box and the BOS were ahead of their time. Um, taking advantage of multiple processes, which wasn't a common thing back then, um, using preemptive multitasking and a 64-bit database-like uh, file system. Okay, so uh, Haiku has uh, since implemented many of these features, and uh, I'll just sort of go through a, um, a few of those today. So preemptive multitasking, um, what is it? Well, there are in uh, multitasking, and there are basically two models. There's uh, cooperative and preemptive. Um, with the cooperative model, um, each application is responsible for looking after each other. Um, and in the um, preemptive model, um, the CPU sharing is managed by a system uh, part of the OS called the scheduler. Um, the scheduler op uh, Assigns um, slices of um, the assigned CPU based on a set of heuristics. Uh, this means that the developer and both the end user need not worry about anything to do with uh, multitasking, and that's why it makes it a responsive system. Pervasive multi uh, threading is uh, where all applications are divided up into um, small chunks um, that can be then run in parallel. These uh, small threads um, work together in teams and uh, can communicate with, between each other. Um, this m basically means that there's, um, when, a, when a system is under heavy stress, um, you can you know, fire off a few movies, MP3s, a few file transfers, and when you still go to access one of the menus, uh, it'll respond straight away and it, the system won't feel bogged down. Um, that uh, click of the menu item will uh, get immediate attention. Um, this is basically um, due to the, uh, the multi-threading part and um, whilst most other operating systems obviously have multi-threading, um, none of them do it pervasively and since, since there are none that do it, uh, there are no other operating systems that seem as responsive as, as Haiku. 
Um, this is one thing that, that led me to BOS originally um, back in 2000. Um, when I, first, when I first saw it, I thought, well, here's an, here's an operating system that actually takes advantage of all the hardware and puts it to good use. Uh, the B file system, uh, or BFS, uh, was designed from scratch to be a, a high bandwidth media processing. Um, what, what this means is, like, uh, and there, there are other file systems, like FAT32, that have file limitations of, of four gigabytes in size. Uh, the the, the B, BFS, um, certainly doesn't have anything near this. The example I actually like to give is that you can actually store files up to 18,000 petabytes. Um, because the file system is also journaled, um, your data integrity, integrity is maximized. Um, this means that if you lose power on a uh, high key system, you're not going to um, have any uh, file system corruption. And then when you uh, resume power and the system comes back up again, um, in 15 seconds or less, you don't have to go, go through any uh, lengthy scan disk or FS check or, or desktop rebuilds. Uh, Haiku includes a, a data interchange and scriptability uh, format called um, B messages. Uh, this is a language neutral uh, protocol, uh, basically, essentially, packets of information that can be sent from uh, from one uh, application to another, or even from one window to another within an application. Um, this means that you can use any language like Python, Perl, Bash, C++ um, to actually script a GUI application. All that a GUI application has to do is add in hooks uh, using a namespace, and then um, they can, other scripts can take advantage of it. Um, this is akin very much to something like uh, AppleScript or, or Rex. And I'll be getting into that more in the demo. Uh, being Linux users, I'm sure you're all familiar with what POSIX is. Um, this, um, you know, being a, a great set of tools um, and having it available for Haiku means that people who who are familiar with these tools can easily migrate to to Haiku with um, with very little trouble at all. As I said, it is backward compatible with. Uh, BOS R5, which was the last release of BOS, and I think it's important that Haiku, I mean, that's where its heritage has come from, and that was originally, obviously, the goal of the first release of Haiku is to be uh, compatible with this, this last release, meaning that um, uh, Haiku at the moment is currently on, uh, well, the last uh, release of BOS was on GCC 2.95, and uh, that means Haiku is currently on that build. However, it is uh, release two is looking forward to moving forward with obviously GCC four. And at the moment, there in fact you can also um, build hybrid systems that run both GCC two and GCC four, meaning you can take advantage of both those applications. So, uh, what advantages does Haiku have that, that makes it stand out from the crowd? Well, it has a very fast boot up time. Um, you can usually, on, on real hardware, you can boot up in about uh, seven seconds. Um, I know other operating systems, such as Windows 7, will say they've got a fast boot up time, but there are many cycles um, before you can actually start um, using it. Uh, the new um, MacBook Airs are quoting fast boot up times, but that's generally due to their, uh, their hardware, their solid state drives that they have. And um, personally, I'd, I'd love to see a Haiku system run on a solid state drive. I think it probably boot up in maybe three or four, sec three or four seconds. It has uh, low hardware requirements, um, meaning that you can run a system with um, 512 meg of, uh, of RAM, um, and a gig would, uh, a Haiku system would run happily. Um, compare that with, say, other operating systems, such as Windows 7, which needs at least four gig to run well, and, uh, and OS X maybe two. It has a, uh, a very small footprint. Um, basically, a uh, full install, uh, even with applications, will be around about one, one, one to two gigabytes, with the operating system being around about 500 megabytes. Um, and once again, comparing that with other operating systems, like Windows 7, which needs about 10 gig, um, and OS X, which is around six, six to eight gig. Uh, granted, you could say that these, these other operating systems are doing more, but um, in a lot of respects, they, I mean, do they really need to be? I think there's a lot of feature creep in, in both of those. 
It is uh, open source licensed. It's using the MIT license, uh, which basically means in, in layman terms, if you've got a commercial product, you can reuse the code as long as the original license is, uh, is kept with it. Uh, it's very similar to the BSD license, except for I believe they have a caveat to do with um, promotion. So, and that, that's not uh, part of the MIT one. Okay, some of the underlying technologies that Haiku has recently got praised for um, is its uh, is vector vector icon format, um, which was invented by one of the uh, Haiku um, core developers. Uh, this format enables for uh, very small files and uh, fast fast rendering. Uh, they're also using the free type um, font support, which is a high quality and portable font engine. And this is something that um, BOS didn't have. And we're also using a network compatibility layer um, thanks to the uh, FreeBSD project. Now, it is, um, it is alpha software. Uh, so I will uh, stress that, that at, you know, use at your own risk. I mean, obviously, um, we're not um, suggesting that you use it in any production in environment. Um, Certainly not yet. Um, so some of the roadblocks that we see that, uh, that currently need to be uh, sorted out, um, wireless LAN support um, it currently only runs on a few hardware platforms. And there's only WEP, which has been uh, enabled, which I, I wouldn't even use that. Uh, in saying that, there is a uh, there was a code bounty that was done by haikuware.com. They're one of the leading um, Haiku websites, and uh, that's, that uh, bounty has recently been taken up to add WPA um, and WPA2 support. Uh, there was a blog post uh, from, from this developer uh, from December where he said he's got half of it working, uh, and so it, should, it shouldn't be too long before he has a chance to, to nut all that out. Also being worked on is the localization support. Uh, this is one, one area where Haiku is um, different from, I think, from a lot of open source um, uh, projects in that uh, Haiku is used uh, mainly in countries where uh, English is not the uh, primary language. So um, an example of this would be um, the Haiku users in, uh, in Japan, uh, thanks to a, a bunch of them, they've, they've added um, very good hiragana and uh, kanji support. Uh, Haiku has also added a new um, web browser. Uh, obviously, the old one, Net Positive, wasn't wasn't going to cut it. It uh, it was basically a HTML2 um, browser. So, this is a a, a new uh, browser that is based on uh, WebKit. Um, and it's really taken off in say the last six six to eight months. Uh, it doesn't have uh, full HTML5 support, so um, we wouldn't be able to watch the streams on it. Uh, but this has been worked on slowly. Uh, there is um, no uh, Flash support because Flash is a um, closed proprietary um, software. Uh, however, there is the uh, the Nash project, and I believe the latest version can now actually play um, YouTube videos. Um, I'm, I've been a true believer that I really wish that Adobe would have open sourced Flash. Uh, I think that if they really wanted it to truly be part of the internet, then that would that would be a, a way to go. Um, so, so Haiku won't, doesn't support Flash, uh, but neither do millions of iPhones and iPads. Um, so that is, uh, in a way, has sort of helped push newer technologies like HTML5 to the forefront. Just some stats on Haiku. There's currently six and a half million uh, lines of code, and that has been contributed from over 37 developers uh, from around the, around the globe. So. Um, the Haiku team is still relatively small. Um, we currently have um, two full-time employees. Um, they're being paid uh, with donations from the, uh, the website. Uh, and uh, at present, those two developers, one of them is, is one of the guys I mentioned who's working on the wireless stuff, and the other guy is working on um, critical app server bugs, uh, the media player and the media kit. Uh, recently, probably in the last couple of months, um, Qt was um, ported to um, Haiku 4.7. And so along with that, that has brought um, a, num a number of apps along to Haiku. Um, 
It's just a screenshot of it in action. Um, apps such as Transmission, uh, before that you used to have to run it on the web-based version. Uh, vacuum the instant messenger client. Um, Scribus, which I believe there was a tutorial on that earlier in the week. And I've even seen um, shots of, uh, of K-Office uh, being ported on it. I haven't actually got that working myself, but it, uh, I believe it is possible. So I've just got these shots of uh, K-Presenter and, uh, and Carbon 14. So you might be wondering, um, how can you get it and try it out? Well, the easiest way to, to try it out is, uh, is VMware. Download um, one of the VMware images we have, which you can use in uh, VMware Player uh, or in uh, um, Oracle's, I was going to say Sun, uh, Oracle's VirtualBox. We also have um, hosted uh, any, any boot or live CD, so you can try that live CD experience, but um, trust me, it, it really doesn't um, show off Haiku's uh, responsiveness or, or its speed. It's actually, um, it's actually not that great at all. Um, so it's, it's better to uh, run the runners on real hardware if you really want to check out uh, Haiku's speed. But as I said, the, um, the VMware images are, are easy to get. Um, the other way to do it is to uh, build it um, from, the, from the source repository under, a, say, say, a Linux operating system. Uh, and I just uh, thought I'd go through a few slides of um, doing that under Ubuntu. So uh, first of all, in order to, to do it under Ubuntu, you'll need a few packages. So you just need um, those ones, which are all pretty, pretty standard stuff. Um, Subversion is what we actually use as our repository. Uh, you then do a simple checkout of the build tools. Uh, these are the ones responsible for doing the cross-platform stuff. Uh, then, once you've once you've downloaded that, you'll go in and uh, make jam. Oh, sorry, yeah, make, sorry, make jam. Uh, jam is is very much like uh, make. Uh, jam is the build system that we actually use at Haiku. You'll then check out the uh, the full source, which I currently believe it's over two gigs. So, uh, if you're doing this, um, just please be aware that you know of the bandwidth um, that you're going to be pulling down. Uh, you then got um, two options. Um, oh, I've just put up the, the. You can actually build a hybrid system as well, but I've just put up the two uh, config um, commands for uh, setting it up for a GCC four build or a GCC two. Uh, if anybody wants the hybrid commands, just come and see me later and talk about that. Uh, and when you're ready to, to build, it's just a matter of running the jam command, and that'll create the. Um, the AnyBoot image uh, for you. If you want to create the VMware image, it's just a matter of adding that, that parameter to it. And if you want to write to a partition, um, you just have to uh, run it to first build the system and then uh, a sudo, so then it's got permission to actually write that, uh, what it's created to the, um, to the partition. Some of the first things you need to do, though, is uh, once you've checked out that source in the trunk build jam directory, there is the uh, you have to create a user build, boot config. Uh, there is a user boot config readme and uh, and a sample file in there, uh, and you just go in um, simply edit with via whatever whatever your favourite editor is, uh, and just change those parameters. You know, saying which partition you want to point it to. Um, you know, if there's any configurations that you want to do, if there's any particular software that you wanted to actually um, download first and install, or uh, even you know setting your time zone, those types of things as well. And then run jam, and then you just need to edit grub grub two. Um, just have to usually with that you create like a profile, and then uh, and then add it in, and then you can. Um, hold down shift key when you boot and then uh, get in that way. Okay, so I've been talking about it for a while, so I uh, thought I'd just go through a couple of demos. Yeah. Okay, so I'm now, I'm just uh, running it here on a VMware system, so um, hopefully there's not too many issues with it. 
you won't see the speed in it loading here because I'm actually um, booting up, um, I'm using the uh, CD-ROM of the actual machine here as well to do one of the demos and also loading a second hard drive. You've also got the option when that's booting, you can hold down the, the space bar uh, and that'll give you any of your um, safe boot mo options, like if, say, um, say if something's not working with your, with your video card, um, then uh, you can go boot into the safe mode option and use one of the visa options or there's, there's a multiple things that you can get, get there to try. Okay, um, so here's the operating system, I'll just... Um, so if I want to uh, just mount this, just got a CD here and I'm just going to mount. This is just a, a, a B file system where I'm just keeping, keeping the files that I'm going to work on. So um, with, with a CD, when I, when I open it up, it's not listed as um, CDA files or anything like that. They're WAV files, so I can actually um, just drag, drag it off there and it'll actually start copying to the desktop uh, when the CD spins up. And I can actually start playing that file. Um, I don't know, can't really hear it, but it's um, so that music's playing even whilst it's um, being copied across. If I um, say go to do a second file copy, um, that immediately snaps to the window. Uh, like and like other operating systems, we end up with all these different windows all over the place. Uh, so then you can actually, if you want to, you can say, no, I want to, that's taking too long, I'll pause that, and you can stop that, and then go and go back to it later on. And just, yeah. It's going to make a liar out of me now. Okay. Um, just some of the other um, desk bar tricks that, um, sorry, desk bar is the, is is what you're seeing here. Um, tracker is the, um, uh, sorry, des sorry, desk bar is, is what you're seeing up here in the corner. Um, so, you know, if, if you don't like it up there, if you want to, you can drag it down here and have it be more, you know, like an other operating system or drag it up the top here. But um, personally, I prefer it over there on the side. Uh, I'm not sure what that's doing. Um, One of the threads is just held up. Mm. Okay, um, so some of the other things you can do, um, so say if I need to, uh, you know, jump into a, a terminal, you've got the ability to do that, very simple. Um, you've also got the option of, say, if you want to, say, if I want to copy this file, um, you can just right click on it, you've got the move to, copy to, but it also adds these extra links of um, current folder, recent recent folders, so this would have a list of all the folders that I've accessed um, obviously recently, uh, and then you know, you, and if you're working on something all the time then you can quickly move files uh, very easily between the operating system. The other thing is that uh, the way that the files work on the file system, they're basically pointers, so um, if I just uh, actually, where is it? So this um, this WAV file, which I believe has locked up, <laughs> uh, I'll go to something else. Uh, I should think that may have. just restart that. <laughs> I think that'll be easier. Um, yeah, so basically what, what I was going to demo there, uh, um, this, this will come up fairly simple and quickly anyway, uh, is basically, as I said, the files are like a pointer on the operating system, so I can just move, move the file from one directory to another, um, 
I can still have that file open. Um, the program that had it open isn't, isn't really going to care because it's just looking at where, where that pointer is. So I could have moved it um, anywhere. I could have deleted it. I could have renamed it, um, done any of that sort of thing. So, um, so if I just play that track again, um, so if I... to move it. I can move it when it's still playing and that's not going to affect the, the operating system at all. I think that's enough of that demo. A um, couple of other tricks that you can do with the uh, desk bar. Um, you've got these uh, tabs at the top and they, they can overlay and stuff like that. There's, um, if you hold down the uh, shift key you can actually move these tabs. It's called sliding tabs. Uh, so you know if you had them um, I don't know if you had, you know, a couple of windows that were over the top of each other, uh, then you could easily, um, you know, flick between the two. Um, so that that's there as uh, just another feature that, or if you want them on the other side or something. Uh, one of the other things is also you can uh, auto resize a um, folder that has files in it. So um, as an example here, you know, it's taking up too much room. I just want to see that that size. Um, you can just hit the Alt or Y command and it'll automatically go there. Um, now, I'll just open up an image. Uh, from inside the image, I can uh, set this as a background. Um, I can have it to scale if I want, or if it's uh, larger than what it is, which this picture is, I can go manual and then uh, you know move it around myself in this window and go, yeah, that looks about right. I'll apply, and um, so there it is um, set underneath. Just minimise those. Uh, one of the uh, features that came from BOS that obviously we still got is um, the ability to have workspaces, uh, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Uh, so I believe you can have up to 12. Um, the system obviously comes set up with four, uh, so that I can move around. Um, let me just, just do, set the background with this one as well. Oh, that's the right size. Uh, so yeah, so just to show that we're different workspaces. Uh, now, one of the other um, cool features that's in Haiku, um, workspaces is actually a replicant. And what replicants are, um, I'm not sure if you can, it's probably a little hard to see this little hand thing down the bottom, but I can then just drag that off the window and uh, drop it on the desktop. And so then that now um, will stay on the desktop until you actually, you can right click on that little hand and remove that replicant. There are, there are a bunch of um, applications that actually support this. Uh, so if we just go to the activity monitor, um, memory usage. Oops. Bit over. Uh, there's also the it's another one, there's the desktop <coughs> desktop calculator. An operating system would be complete without a calculator. Um, and also, so yeah, so if, like I said, if you want to remove it, it's just a matter of uh, right click and remove. Um, just bring up the audio. And so you know, even. Uh, So if I want to do, I could put the volume control down there or whatever. Uh, how are we going for time? Um, now I just thought I'd also have a go. There's um, one of the applications that's being uh, written for Haiku is uh, it's called Paladin. Um, 
It's uh, an IDE for developing um, applications. Uh, and I just thought I'd uh, run through just creating a very simple, uh, we'll just call it test. Show the didn't ah oh, sorry. Let me just try that again. That's what I forgot to do. Just wanted to create uh, a GUI with a um, with a main window, obviously. Ah, see, so there we go. So now it's populated with uh, with those files. Uh, so the first thing I just wanted to do here is go in here and edit the, add a, uh, oops, sorry I'm in the wrong window. So, yeah, so this is all um, C++ code. Um, the guy who's actually developing this, he did some development work which he put up recently where he was saying about uh, uh, that he is actually adding other, other languages to it. So he's looking at Ruby and Python um, and not sure on the others. So might might just skip this demo just for um, brevity. Uh, uh, one of the things that I touched on earlier was the... Um, uh, the B messages and how you can send those around the system. Uh, and one of the one of the uh, command line tools that was written a, a while ago is uh, it's called Hey. Um, you can use this this program to um, in basically do interrogate uh, GUI apps, and find out information about them. So, uh, as an example, um, just to you know, get that, basically the way you call it is you call Hey, uh, print server, and then usually some sort of command. Uh, the get sweets command uh, actually lists you know, all those um, all the properties that are available, uh, and so you can see this is all um, to do with printers. Um, and so from from this list, I was able to work out stuff uh, such as uh, go hey print server count printers. And tell me that there's actually two. Bring up the printers, and at the moment on there is a preview and a um, save as save as PDF. You can actually um, there is more uh, commands that you can actually give that will actually uh, you know create printers, set set active printers, uh, delete the trash. Any of, the, any of those sorts of things, you can do those um, with any sort of scripting. Uh, so I might just cut that. Oops. Okay. Uh, so hopefully some of you might be thinking about getting involved or, or at least trying out, uh, out Haiku. Um, Haiku for the last uh, four years has been a part of the Google Summer of Code, which I'm sure you um, would have heard Carol Smith talking about that. Uh, and it's uh, certainly a great way to get um, people paid, developers paid for their, um, their content, uh, as well as it has also boosted Haiku's development cycle. There are mailing lists, which I encourage you to get involved with. Um, there's these two IRC channels, Haiku, which is the main one, and Haiku-AU, which is one, uh, there's very few people except for me usually in there. Um, documentation, there's heaps of documentation on the official website. Uh, this is one thing that Haiku's actually been praised for that uh, a lot of open source um, projects don't normally have, but uh, there's actually a ton of, ton of stuff for Haiku. Uh, so in closing, and um, 
hopefully uh, at some point you'll uh, try it out. Uh, as I said, the VMware is the easiest way to do it. For the developers out there, um, as I said, it is a small project and um, it's very easy to say, make, make your mark, uh, so to speak, and possibly get paid in the process. It also uh, doesn't look too bad on, if it's on your, uh, on your CV. Uh, there's a couple of uh, official um, or, or helpful websites. The haiku-os.org is the main site. Haiku-files.org is where you'll get all, download all those uh, daily builds from. And dailyhaiku.net is the, um, basically a resource where all the Haiku news is reported. Um, thanks for your time. Questions? Overall, it appears that the uh, project is, is kicking off fairly well. Yes. I do have a couple of grave fears just for general user ability on it. Um, I hope down the track just a couple of things that they will implement um, the opportunity of putting non-free on there to allow Flash to come on if people so desire it. If yep. people don't want it, then they don't have to have it. And the other option is to have ISO packages which make life a lot easier to install stuff rather than having to compile it all. Yes, um, one of the um, projects that's actually been worked on is a package management system. Uh, there's, a, there's a very basic one that's, that's built in at the moment. You basically type install optional package uh, and then you can type like uh, one of the names like uh, OpenSound or Web Positive or any of those packages and it'll install. But uh, an actual real package management is being looked at at the moment. There's a blog post about it where the guy's looked at all the different ones that are out there and he's trying to choose the, the best parts of it. So, yeah, no, and I'd like to see Flash on there too. There appears to be more important things to fix, like Windows opening it larger than my screen size. Yes. <laughs> right, I was just wondering if anyone was working on any other architecture support, non xe 6 Sorry, what's that? Any other architecture, non xe 6 architecture support? Uh, there is a guy in France I know who's um, been compiling it for his Nokia tablet, and he's also been working on, I think that's an ARM. Um, and there is a PowerPC build, but it's, it's very... Um, yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's actually someone's taken the time to, to build it from this. Because there was actually no, because um, BOS was closed source, there was no operating uh, source, uh, source code from it. Um, there were a couple of the small little apps that were open source, but uh, basically it was all recreated from the docu original documentation. So. Do you expect at some point, which I assume would be with enough popularity, that there'll be like distributions of Haiku like there is with Linux? Uh, possibly, and there is, there is one, uh, that website I mentioned, haikuware.com, there's a guy, he's actually, uh, he calls his Senru, uh, which is the name of his opera, um, distribution of it. There's nothing actually to stop people from doing it as, because of that license. Uh, with this, this Senru distribution that he uh, makes, it's just bigger and it's got all these packages already pre-installed and configured and stuff like that. So. Uh, I know there are certain people in the Haiku community who would rather not see that, who would rather just see the vanilla um, install, uh, but I personally don't have anything against it and the license doesn't really have anything against it. About the only thing is the, um, the use of the, uh, the copyright use of the images, that's about it. Any more questions? Oh, hi, V guy. Oh, no, sorry. It's not so much a question as a, as a comment, I guess. Um, yep. the, the wireless is a real issue, I think. Um, for the two or three years that I've been keeping an eye on Haiku, yes. um, I pulled the CD down three or four months ago, I guess. Yep. And I, there's no way known I can run a, a WAP even around the house. No, no, definitely not. I, I totally agree, uh, which is why um, we're all sort of waiting with bated breath for um, Axel in, in Germany to come up with a good solution. Uh, he's, he is one of the um, main developers who was working on uh, the tracker and he's the, the main kernel developer, so uh, we all think he'll be able to do it. He's basing it off um, the FreeBSD code, so. 
Uh, this is more of a general comment than a question, but uh, Haiku is very Unix-like, which means it runs a lot of cool stuff, like you can actually already download Python, and I've compiled lots yes. of SDL games like OpenTTD and Wesnoth and mm. lots of cool things actually already run on Haiku that aren't designed to run on it, so yeah. um, it's actually not as foreign as you might think. Mm. We're actually uh, looking for someone to maintain the SDL. So if anyone's interested. <laughs> uh, well, I can hear you, but it's probably the feed. Is that right? I'm just interested to hear your hardware support. Um, you're running in a VM, that's fine, but yep. how about bare metal hardware and new hardware, you know, brand new laptops, brand new desktops? What can you uh, say about that? Well, th that's what I basically, um, prior to this talk, actually, I had two of my PCs actually died, uh, so I couldn't actually run it on, on real hardware. I am actually running on a, um, a Sony UM, UM PC at home. Uh, I've also ran it on, um, where I work at the uni, we've got um, Dell Optiplex systems. Uh, I know some of the older ones, it doesn't work with those, it's usually the video support, uh, but I had tried the latest, the 980, and um, it worked with those, so uh, yeah, it's just purely it's a matter of getting those drivers, that was one of the biggest problems that BOS had uh, back in the day, um, but thanks to the, you know, the network seems to be kind of pretty much sorted out, I think, because of that network compatibility layer with uh, FreeBSD, so borrowing, borrowing those parts from everywhere else. Any more questions? If not, let's put our hands together. Lunch. Now on behalf of LCA, I'd like to give our speaker this present, which is a bowl hmm. made from Queensland macadamia nuts. Cheers. Thank you.